Let's go. I don't know what you're going through, but we stopped by to tell you that what's in front of you is bigger than what's behind you. Your destiny, your promise, your future. You might as well shout before you get it, because God sent me here to tell you that what he has for you is going to be big. That it's my season. That it's my season. You ought to declare that over your own life. Say, I believe. I believe. That it's my time. That it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. And I can feel it. <laughs> Say, breakthroughs in the room. Breakthroughs in the room. It's yours if you want it. Anticipating. God's getting ready to move. God's getting ready to move. Listen, you ought to declare this over your own life. Say it. God, he's working a miracle just for me. And it's going to be. Hey, listen, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about my future. Why? It's going to be big. Shouting into my promise. Why? God's gonna. strength. 
We thank you for Jesus who died and rose from the dead for those who believe in him to have everlasting life. And oh God, we lift up those that are on beds of affliction, those that lost loved ones. And then, oh God, we ask for cleansings of, of this nation. We ask, oh God, that you just touch leaders in high places and remind them that you are king of kings and that they are just servants for the people of the world. Oh God, we thank you for your church. Your church that stands on the solid rock, which is Jesus. God, we thank you for food. We thank you for clothing. We thank you for providing all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And oh God, as we continue to suffer through this pandemic, we ask, oh God, you continue to give us a peace which passes all understanding and remind us that we are overcomers because you too is an overcomer. We thank you, God, for being God all by yourself. We thank you for delivering us. We thank you for saving our very souls. Then, oh God, we know that one of these old days when this life on this side of the river is over, we got to board the old ship of Zion and sail to a land where there is no more crying, no more weeping, no more dying. But we want to hear you say, well done, that good and faithful servant. But until then, God, continue to hold us in the hall of your care. Continue to remind us that you see all, you know all, and all we have to do is to call upon you, and you will hear and answer our prayers. Thank you, God, for being good. Thank you for being merciful. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that walks with us, talks with us, and reminds us that we are your children. It's in the name of Jesus we just said thank you. Amen, amen, and amen. Just know that Jesus, he's there.
as we prepare to commune together on this first Sunday of August. I read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 34, that the writer write, For I have received from the Lord, which I also pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he come. So then, whoever eat the bread and drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. But those who eat and drink without discernment Concern the Lord's body of Christ, eat and drink his judgment to themselves. This is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come into such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be foundly condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and my sisters, when you gather to eat, you shall all eat together. Anyone who is hungry should eat something at home so that when we meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give you further direction. As we bow today, we thank God for what he did for us on Calvary's cross, shedding his blood that we will be covered and cleansed from our sin. So as we come today, we thank God for this communion service. Lord, on this day, we ask that you would just look at us. If you should find anything that should not be, we ask, O oh God, you remove it right now in the name of Jesus. O oh God, we come earnestly and openly to you to partake of the body and to drink of the blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. On the night when Jesus was to commune with his disciples, the Bible says he took bread, he broke it, and he gave thanks. Father, we just thank you for the broken body of Jesus. For we know by his stripes we are healed. Let us eat together. Likewise, took the cup when he poured, he said, this represents the New Testament of my blood. As often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. Father, we just thank you for the shed blood of Jesus, the blood that covered all of our sins, making us white as snow. Let us drink together. After sop was over, Jesus and the disciples of the Cardinal went out on Mount of Olives. And the Bible says there was a hymn, lead us in a selection.
My brothers and my sisters, we greet you on this day in the name of him who sacrificed his life so that we could have eternal life. Him who paid the price, the penalty for sin, that we may enjoy life on this side and eternal life on the other side. We come to give him praise and thank him for all he has done for us. Let us pray. Eternal God the Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. But oh Lord, as we come to minister to your people from your word, we ask a special anointing, the filling of your Holy Spirit. Then, oh God, we ask that you, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For Lord, you are my strength. Truly, you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. The text for today, the text for today comes from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And we'll be reading from the New King James Version. Verse number 9 says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 10, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not attained mercy, but now have attained mercy. Thus in the reading of God's word. By him who helps me, we want to talk to you today from this subject, chosen to be special. Chosen to be special. Most people I know have numerous friends, but in that friendship, they have one or two that they call special friends. One that they can share their wicked, wicked, wicked moments with. One that will be there to listen to their every need. Even, even in a relationship, we like to think that we are special when it comes to our significant other. We want to feel special. We want to be treated special. But here in the text today, we want you to know this morning that we declare that you are special. You are special because you have been chosen by God. Look at the text one more time. The text says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God who had not attained mercy, but now have attained mercy. When people do not think much of you or have counted you out, you need to know that you are special because you have been chosen by God. Oh, it's okay. You can shout hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me as your special child. And I know that I am special because of the blessings and the favor from you on my life. Verses 4 through 8 of the, of the text chapter give us a description of Jesus Christ as a living stone. Stones are used as a support structure for a foundation. In ancient times, the cornerstone was the principal stone placed at the corner of the building. 
It was one of the largest and most solid stones. Our Lord Jesus Christ is called a stone to denote his indestructible strength and eternal duration and to instill in those who believe in him that he is our protection, he is our security, he is our foundation on which we are built. And he is the fortress protect, protecting us from danger. So when evil people come to steal and kill and destroy, they will stumble and fall. Jesus is the living stone, having eternal life in himself, and being the prince of life to all who believe in him. Seeing Jesus as the foundation, the cornerstone, we find in verse 5 that you also, as living stones, are being built upon a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. When, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become stones which will be added to the building his church. I am not talking about a physical building, but a spiritual one. Jesus Christ, the foundation, is the living stone, and believers are living, are living stones made in a spiritual house. We are a holy priesthood. And though we have not made, been made offered, uh, offered a, a spiritual sacrifice of blood, we have a much better and more acceptable spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ, which is that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Let us look at the text. But you are a chosen generation. The Jews were exceedingly sensitive to their ancient privilege of being the only people of God taken into a special covenant with him and separated from the rest of the world. But through Jesus Christ, a door was opened to allow all who choose him to be part of the chosen generation called God people. When we choose Jesus Christ, God chooses us. We become his people. All believers are ch chosen generation. We all make one family, a people distinct from the common world. We are a people of another spirit, a, another principle, and another practice, which we could never be if we were not chosen in Jesus Christ and sanctified by his spirit. Unfortunately, there are far too many, pe too many chosen people who have an identity crisis. They do not recognize who they are in Jesus Christ because they have allowed the world to define what being Christ-like is. One that is judgmental. One that is weak and one that goes through the motion of some religious activity. My prayer is that all God's people come to the realization that you have been chosen to be special. And since you are special, think as Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not considered to be wrong to rather be equal with God. Philippians 2 and 6. The text, a royal priesthood. The word warrior means of a king or a queen. 
It speaks of a heritage and bloodline. Servants of Jesus Christ are a royal priesthood. We are royal in our relationship to God, in our power with God, and over ourselves and over our spiritual enemies. We are priestly in the improvement and excellence of our own spirit, in our hope and expectation. We are a royal priesthood, separated from sin and sinners, consecrated to God, and offering to God spiritual sacrifices and services acceptable to, to God through Christ Jesus. If we see ourselves as being adopted into the royal family, which come with certain responsibilities, we will begin to live up to those responsibilities. We are not without fault, and we do not always get it right. But when we have desire, the desire, God can and will work it out for us in our life. Notice that first in verse 5, Peter had referred to us as holy priesthood. But here in the text, he called us royal priesthood. This is to show that we were made not only spiritual priests, but spiritual kings and queens. This is a privilege that the Jews did not have as God's original chosen people. As believers, we are both priests in respect of God, to whom we are concentrated, to whom we offer up spiritual sacrifices, and also kings and queens in respect of our enemies over whom we are victorious and are the kingdom whereafter we will inherit in Christ Jesus. This may seem far off to some of us, but our enemies have done an excellent good job of blinding us of our true heritage. It is a time for us to wake up, note that although we are not all called to preach the gospel from the pulpit, we are to walk in a priestly office as a child of God because you are to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. You may ask, how can I do that if I have not been called or chosen to preach? I'm so glad you asked. You can do it by walking circumspectly in the world, to be just in your dealing, faithful in your engagement, and expression in your deployment, that is, in your manner, your demeanor, your behavior, and your attitude. And you are to avoid talent, backbiting, and excessive anger. Back to the text. A holy nation. We are a holy nation. And read in Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For you are a holy people of God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself. A special treasure above all the people on the face of the earth. Moses called the children of Israel a holy people in respect of their separation from the impurities of the Gentile, their dedication to God and to the laws God gave them, obliging them to eternal and ceremonial purity, whereby they were to abolish to in, internal and real holiness. But we are a holy nation in respect of the truth in what holiness? We are a holy nation consecrated and devoted to God, renewed and sanctified by His Holy Spirit. This is who we are, but we must choose to walk in this knowledge. The text says His own special people. The King James Version read a peculiar people. 
We are God's own special people. It is an honor of the servants of Jesus Christ that we are called peculiar people. His possession. We are peculiar because we are not like the rest of the world. We think differently. We do things differently. We live differently. We talk differently. We have different morals. We have values that are different. We are to be different so that we can be noticed. And since we are God's people, we are, to, we are not to live by fleshly lust that drives most of the world. Paul writes in Titus 2, 11 through 14, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for our good work. We are peculiar because we are a chosen generation. God provided a way for us to be reconciled with him through our faith in Jesus Christ. Because of faith, we can spend eternity in heaven. We are a people of God's acquisition. We are a people of God's choice. We are a people of God's care. We are a people of God's delight. I do not know about you. But that makes me know that I am special. No one for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 6, 23. And, but God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5 and 8. Since we are God's acquisition, God's chosen, God's care, and God's delight, we are no longer in our first state of darkness, but we are effectually called out of darkness into a state of marvelous light. The state of love, the state of joy, the state of peace, the state of patience, the state of kindness, the state of goodness, the state of faithfulness, the state of gentleness, and the state of self-control. Now, with this intent and view, we, we should show forth by words and action the virtue and praises to God who have chosen us to be special for himself. The text, the text goes on to say that you may proclaim the praise of God who called you out of darkness into a marvelous light. Because of what God has done for us in choosing us, in calling us out of darkness into his marvelous light, we should publish and declare both in words and deeds what God has done for us so that others may get excited to come to get the glory of God and to give him glory. The praise of him, his virtue, wisdom, power, goodness, righteousness, truth, which God has manifested in his care of us. Yes, God called us out of darkness. God brought us out of the darkness of ignorance. God brought us out of the darkness of unbelief. God brought us out of the darkness of sin. 
God brought us out of darkness of mir uh, misery into his marvelous light. The light of knowledge, the light of faith, the light of holiness, and the light of comfort. It is called marvelous because we can see what we never saw before. One of the things out of God's word and because it is a marvelous thing that we can set down, we who were once set down in gross darkness should be transformed into the glorious light. The text, verse 10, reads, Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who have not attained mercy, but now have attained mercy. There was a time when we were not a people, nor had we attained mercy. But now we are taken again to be the people of God and have attained mercy. Some of you might not remember what your life was like without Jesus Christ. Just in case, Paul said, Oh, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Romans 7, 24. Then he comes back and says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Every now and then, you need to look back to see where you were without Jesus in your life. Then look at where you are since you have come to know and accept him as your Lord and your Savior. Being a child of the King, you can shout, I am safe in his arms. The people of God are the most valuable people in the world. So to be brought into the number of the people of God, we have to attain mercy that only comes from God. Great mercy is obtained by believing in Jesus Christ. The, the mercy of God allows us to enjoy our privilege being justified and at peace with God. Never forget that whatever trouble we are now suffering, whatever privileged challenges we are now facing, whatever pain we are wrestling with, even in the days of hell, the sovereign God has already extended his mercy to his people. God have delivered us now from the worst condition of our life. God has given us mercy. We may still suffer financial or health problems. We may be in pain as we fulfill our ministry or whatever task God has ordained for us to do. But because of his mercy, we are now God's people. And if he is for us, who can be against us? As you go through with the new challenges of here, let us arm ourselves with the thought that the Heavenly Father has provided all our needs and he will continue to do so in the coming days. He is always at work in our lives. In fact, He chose us. He called us out of darkness and He has given us mercy. With a great and sovereign Father like that, not only our coming new days will surely be happy, but even our eternity with Him. Chosen to be special mean God has chosen you. God has called you out of darkness.
God has given you mercy. That makes you and me special. We are so special that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus stood trial for us. Jesus was beaten for us. Jesus was crucified for us. Jesus died for us. Jesus was buried to show us that he is the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believes in him, though he may die, he shall live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in him shall never die. Jesus, on the third day morning, got up with all power in his hand. Jesus, through the comforter, walks with me, talks with me, tells me that I am his own. The joy we share let me know that I am chosen to be special. Yes, we are special. Chosen by God. Separated from the world. That when he comes back for his church, we'll be able to rest from all of our labor in a heaven where there is no more sickness Nothing but joy, unspeakable joy. I don't know about you today, but I shout that I am special. I am somebody in Jesus Christ. For that I can just say hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. If you feel unspecial today, we want to extend a special person to you. One that can heal you, one that can save you. One that can deliver you. One that at, at the name every knee shall bow. We extend Jesus to you today. You can come by letter, Christian experience, or Calendary for baptism. All you got to know to do is to know that you are special. And you are coming into a special relationship with God Almighty. Why don't you yield and give yourself to him today? Not to him that's able to keep you from falling. Heaven has sent you faultless for his presence with sin and joy. To the own wise God who is our Savior to make nine power. And the saints of God says amen, 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 amen. And just tell somebody I'm special, I'm special. because I got Jesus and I have all that I need. God bless you.